Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the ASV's Christmas stream. It's been quite a year yet again. Um, but here we are rounding out 2021 um, with one last Christmas stream. Uh, tonight, we hope to bring you a series of Christmas-themed astronomical objects. Uh, and with the skies clear where our astronomers are, not clear everywhere, uh, we're keen to get stuck into live stacking. But before we do, uh, we'd I'd like to say in the spirit of reconciliation, the Astronomical Society of Victoria acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connection to the land, sea and community. And we pay our respect to the elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people today. Uh, tonight's stream is proudly sponsored by Optic Central. Uh, Optic Central are the sponsors of our first 100 year anniversary raffle, which we'll be talking about later on. Uh, if you're on watching tonight's stream on Facebook, uh, We'd love for you to donate some stars. If you're on YouTube, you can donate stickers. And no matter how large or small your donation, they're all welcome because we are a non-profit organisation. And if you're watching for us for the first time, don't forget to uh, subscribe on YouTube or follow us and like us on Facebook. Um, but before we start, I just noticed in the back room we have a very special guest. Um, it looks like Santa has turned <laughs> up. <laughs> Thank How you are you, Christmas, Santa? Yeah. That was absolutely unexpected. Hey, I've been very busy making PlayStation 5s for everyone this year. PlayStation 5 seems to be the most popular uh, present, that's for sure. Um, now, I'm sure you've got a lot of presents to hand out, so we're not going to hold up, hold you up too much longer. We're going to get everybody else in so we can start streaming objects and so that you can head back to the uh, North Pole. So we'll bring in Anne-Marie, Andy... Michael, our comet man, Steve, and the front yard Grinch astronomer. What's that guy doing here? <laughs> now, the first thing I just wanted to talk about while we just wait a little bit for it to get a touch darker before we jump onto the comet, um, I just wanted to let everybody know that we have a new raffle that we'll be launching. We'll be launching it tonight. Uh, the link will hopefully be up after the stream. Uh, it is the first of our 100-year anniversary raffles. 2022 is the ASV's 100th year anniversary, and we're kicking things off with a bang. Uh, Optic Central, we've worked with them on this prize, and it is a Saxon 200DS Astrophotography Newtonian Telescope on a Saxon HEQ5 uh, Pro go-to mount with steel tripod dual saddle, uh, a Skywatcher, uh, sorry, a um, Saxon Shallow HD 12 millimeter. 1.25 inch eyepiece and ED2 21 mil eyepiece and a cello HD 25 mil eyepiece. Uh, raffles valued at just over $3,600 and all of the funds are going to go towards our remote observatory STEM project. The raffles open to Australian residents only and it will be drawn. You've got plenty of time to grab a ticket, um, but they won't all last. I'm going to go, I reckon, on this one. They'll be drawn at the Messier Star Party, which you, which will be on the 26th of March at 2020, uh, 2022. And it'll be drawn at 7 p.m. And hopefully that's when we're going to be able to uh, have the grand opening of our All Abilities Astronomy Project. Uh, one last quick one is we have our first 100-year anniversary dinner event scheduled for the 31st of uh, Jan January at Deeds Brewery. It's a, an event with a three-course dinner and a magical mystique uh, sharing the magical mystique of the Milky Way with the uh, Astronomical Society of Victoria's lantern uh, slide projector. We're going to step back in time and have a look at some slides, glass plate slides from the 1930s. Uh, come dressed in your best 30s gear and you might win a prize. There will be a presentation on the history of the ASV and also a, a quiz as well. Um, it's $120 a person, three-course meal with drink uh, and... It's uh, at Deeds Brewery in Glen Iris. Uh, tickets are already on sale. If you go to the events section on our uh, Facebook page or to the front page of our website, you'll see the link to the event right. So now with all that out of the way, how are we going? Has anyone got our lovely comet ready to rock? Almost. Don't all jump Jeez. at once. Jeez, you're pushing it, mate, I tell you. I am pushing it. I am very pushing because everybody's <laughs> here to see the comets. I've got the mail. Ke Kelly, will you be showing mm. it live? Yes, we are going to show it live. Um, if, one, if, if Michael, our comet man, can get it going for us. <laughs> oh, man, the pressure, put, mate. Put the pressure Perform on him. Performance pressure. 
performance pressure. Here we go. Yes. This is it. Right. It looks different to last night. It sure does. Yeah. It's much brighter. She's blown, mate. She has blown, exploded. <laughs> so I was just going to say, when you say blown, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, outburst. Outburst. Uh, basically, yeah. Basically, um, what well, was on Saturday night, I'd, I got a visual observation of about 4.2 in binoculars. And then um, last night, I had you know, several people were texting me saying, oh, shit, it's bright, it's bright. Yeah, so I, was, I was late at, late getting home from work and I raced out and wham over it was naked eye visible. So it, it had sort of, um, I, I estimated about 2.9. So, and then other people are estimating around the two and a half tops. So and that was last night. So I'll just wait, I'll wait another half an hour to make another visual obs. I should be able to see it make it on fairly soon. But um, yeah, so it's had a big eruption on the nucleus and, and it's looking at that, that parabolic shaped hood there is um, a classic feature of a you know, dust eruption that's just exploding. And I can't see any indication of a of actual fragmentation yet, but potentially it might. I did, I did predict earlier that this, uh, this is a high risk uh, comet for disintegrating as it's approaching the sun because it's um, it's kind of like on the on the borderline of a of a survivor or a non-survivor. Now, we've got some people asking where it is in relation to Venus. What's the best way to explain where they can see this? Yeah, but well, at the moment, actually, Venus is setting quite quickly, um, so you're better off using Saturn as a guide. And at the moment, if you look at Saturn. Um, I would grab a pair of binoculars and aim it at Saturn and then just swing it to the left by about 13 degrees and you should should hopefully encounter it. So we're sort of looking southwest, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah uh, west, west, southwest. West, southwest. Yep. Beautiful. So there we go. We had a question. Do you look about, uh, west about, or east? So, Greg, yeah. west, southwest. So yeah, you'll see 15, Saturn. 15 degrees up. 15 degrees, yep. Yeah. Yep. There we go. So you see Saturn to the west and then sort of heading south across horizontally from that um, towards the south, you'll see the comet. Yeah, now, this is only like a two-second shot too. I was going <laughs> to say, bright, how, bright twilight, so just wait. We'll, we'll, we'll how long is that exposure there? That's a two-second two, exposure, two. is it? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Wow. Oh uh, Yeah, actually, yeah, sorry, using a Celestron 11-inch um, Rasa um, with a Canon 6D camera mounted on the top of it so fairly uh yeah fairly quick exposure but obviously there's going to be uh yeah it, it, tonight is tonight is when we're going to get our dark moon yes because yeah, the, the moonlight's been interfering for quite some time so tonight we should see a, a beautiful tail on it tonight so looking forward to that so this is this is sander's view sander's got some pretty fancy equipment to be able to bring an image like this to us i'm up on a sleigh in the clouds my good man You got some clouds coming through, hey? Get in the way. Just get Rudolph up there to uh, push them out of the way. Rudolph's in the weather, but don't tell anyone else that. <laughs> wow, that's quite a view of this comet. How long the exposure is that one, Santa? Uh, we're pulling in 10 second exposures and I'm stacking them at the moment. So, so 14 frames. So that's 140 seconds, which is, if I do my maths right, it's two minutes and. Hang on. Yeah, two minutes and 20 seconds. Oh, two and a half minutes now. So, Michael, how much longer now that it's it's exploded is this likely to hang around for in the sky at this brightness? This is pretty much tonight, tomorrow night, and then it'll start to fade or...? Uh, <laughs> who knows what this thing is going to do? Comets are comets are like cats. They <laughs> they have tails and they do whatever they want, precisely what they want. <laughs> <laughs> so look, I mean, in all likelihood, it's probably going to be fading slowly, slowly. Uh, the good thing is it's uh, it has shown a, a lot of a big dust outburst. So dust tends to hang around. Well, from my previous experience, um, for example, twenty years ago we had a comet two thousand WM one linear. That had a similar, a similar type of outburst, but slightly bigger, um, and that grew a that grew a lovely dust tail over the days ahead, 
and was basically visible for several weeks. Several weeks. So, so this one hopefully will continue to do the same, but maybe slightly weaker. Yeah, you, know, you might only see a few degrees of dust tail, but <laughs> it's looking very impressive. This, this is one of the, this is one of the finest is, comets it? I've seen in a long while. <laughs> what was that? What was that? It's, it's one of the finest comets I've seen in a long while. It's looking very, very impressive. So we've got a question here from Neil. Is there a chance this one will be visible or even better on the other side of the sun like McNaught, McNaught did? Uh, potentially, yes. Basically, because it's already flown past the Earth. So this is like this was a pre-perihelic um, uh, approach to the Earth, as opposed to Neowise last year, which which was much better developed after its perihelion and, and it approached the Earth after, afterwards. So obviously you're comparing apples with pears, <laughs> a pre-perihelic comet to a post-perihelic. Um, and for those that don't understand the word perihelion, it, it means that it's it's the point at which the, the comet is at its closest point to the sun. So this, this one here is, will be closest on the 3rd of January at uh, 0.61 astronomical units. And that's, that's inside the orbit of Venus. Now we've got another question. Will it be visible tomorrow night? Yes, it will be visible tomorrow <laughs> night. And the night after that, and the night, and the after, night that. after that. And the <laughs> so night pretty after much that. you've got a good two week window now with the moon free. Yep. So you'll be at, you'll see it through Christmas up to through the new year. So And we're meant to have some good weather over the next week or so as well by the looks of it. Yep. So you'll yeah. see it slowly fade. It'll, it'll be a, a nice binocular object and um, you know, photographic one. I have I have seen iPhone shots of it. So yeah, anyone can take a shot of it. it I took decent, some. Decent I took it. I took a photo of it through my little eighty mil, and using my phone last night, um, which I was, I was very impressed that I, I was many, able to take a photo uh, and get it in there. <laughs> so yeah, it's very exciting. So yeah, if you've got a small telescope and you can find this, hook your phone up to it, and you'll be able to take a photo of it. It's it's quite bright. It's that's how how bright it is. Um, Got a couple of people asking if we can see it with the naked eye. I'm pretty sure tonight you'll definitely be able to see it naked eye, uh, Michael. It's going to depend on where you are. I'm, I'm afraid if you're uh, if you're looking over the city of uh, Melbourne or or Brisbane or etc., you, you might struggle because it's uh, if it's if it's around the third magnitude, which is what I'm sort of expecting. Um, yeah, you're going to struggle because it's quite low on the horizon. It's only about 15 degrees up. So really, you need a you need a decent dark dark horizon to the west southwest so if you're in melbourne go down the beach that's probably your best bet down the pretty, beach look west pretty much yes yeah. exactly yep. if you're in the eastern suburbs <laughs> all right so neil's asking all the important questions how fast is it currently moving in degrees and kph <laughs> so in, in in degrees wise it has been moving relatively quickly um probably about three degrees a day uh, but that that will slow because it is receding from the earth so that that speed will sort of drop a bit so it's been very useful lately because it's like you know only on friday alone it was really down the horizon but it's just it's moving up at a fairly quick rate to make it nice and easily visible in a darker higher sky so yeah but but it will slow down and stop and go back down again um so probably by about mid january it'll Get a bit too low again and then disappear and end up end up in the morning sky it'll be much much fainter by then if it if it, if it survives we still don't know whether it's going to hang on or not if it keeps exploding see, like this see how it goes so lynette is asking is it in the sky now yes it is these images you're seeing are live stacked images of the comet um that's actually oh, it's only a two second shot <laughs> your one was no no something sorry not no santa oh, is yeah. is sorry santa is uh, I'm not sure how many he's got in his one now. That's just one of his other names, isn't it? Noel. Noel, it is his Christmas name. Yes, forty-six ten-second images. So total exposure time seven minutes and forty seconds. Uh, so uh, can we show where it is on the map? Um, probably can. It's bear with us. Ah, here we go. Uh, it's in it's in microscopium. So it's one of those rare opportunities to actually talk about the constellation microscopium because there's 
not a great deal in microscoping <laughs> other than, than than Leonard at the moment. So uh, talk so about it. it. You can see it there. It kind of forms a triangle with Saturn and Venus if you... You can see Saturn there slightly on the right-hand side under Copernicus there, and it's sort of to the left, um, heading in that sort of southwesterly direction. Michael, uh, Sky Safari was suggesting it's about 65 million kilometres away. Do you think that's that's going to be fairly accurate, do you think? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. So it, it, it got to, on, on the 12th of December, it got to about 35 million from the Earth, and now it's rapidly moving away it's uh, it's in a retrograde orbit so it's um mm. you know, it's like a, it's like having a, a car heading towards you on a freeway and then just flying past you so it's basically um moving away from a sort of at a cracking cracking rate so um yeah but but as it's approaching the sun it's it should technically be brightening so so that so its brightness should be relatively stable over the next couple of weeks so, you know, the decreasing distance from the sun is offset by the increase in distance from the earth so we have another question on comets in general and, and this comet um gerald wants to know does this comet have two tails sometimes they have two can you explain why that happens yes indeed good, good question two types two types of tails there's a dust tail and an iron tail so the the iron tail is created by um by um molecules such as carbon monoxide they get ionized and then they um, the, the solar wind smashes into the comet and and basically these ions get get stripped away and they they, they act as a very good wind sock for the solar wind because they, they, they point directly away from the sun in most instances uh, whereas a dust tail it looks appears more yellowish and uh, and, and and is seen via reflected sunlight so it's a lot uh, it appears a lot brighter and more obvious um as you can probably see in this image the iron tail is a lot lot more difficult to to detect visually because it it's it uses fluorescent light and it's usually light in the blue spectrum which the eye is not very good at but cameras are very very good at it so a nice a nice camera with a long exposure can take very very nice long iron tails i had a like last year the uh, comet swan 2020 f8 had a had a it captured about uh, 12 degrees of iron tail so possibly this one here if we give it another hour and wait till it's very dark uh, we, we may get a decent iron tail out of it so so yeah somebody use some wide wide angle lenses and um, snap away so we have someone here steve every time there's an astronomical event here they are steve that's why we've got so many of our members scattered around victoria and some of them interstate so that we can find somewhere that has no cloud so we can bring you these images uh, live. So we can say so that's the whole idea. Oh, of these clouds here. Anticipating that, uh, anticipating that there is going to be cloud somewhere and that everyone's going to want to see this comet because it is quite an impressive comet at the moment. And that's why we do these streams. So those who have got clouds can see it still. So here we go, Paul. Paul wants to know, is it heading towards or away from the sun? Uh, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, it's heading um, heading towards the sun. So it'll, it's going to get to 0.61 AU on the 3rd of January and then disappear on the far side of the sun. So it won't, it won't get close to Earth anymore. That's it was the, it, It's already past Earth. So that, that's it for us. So now it's the... Uh, now it's... it's, now it's it's a solar encounter. Now, for those who are watching and, and complaining that there's clouds, we apologise for the clouds. We, we won't do that again. Um, if you know of anyone who wants to watch this or who wants to see the comet and it's cloudy where they are, tell them we're streaming and that we're um, we've got the comet up live view. And as 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 Michael said, we're going to try and keep imaging it. Um, we're going to jump to some other objects and we'll come back to it. That's for sure um so we're, we're going to try and keep imaging it and see if we can get some better images for you um but i think what we might do now is quickly jump across to our our first or our second object i'm not sure if anyone's able to get this next one we got uh ngc 237 i had it before 
If you had it before the cloud came, Anne Marie, right. do you reckon you might be able to get it? I'm on the comet. <laughs> You're on the comet. Hey, everyone's on the comet. We all want the Ooh, comet. The <laughs> oh, everybody just wants to watch the comet. <laughs> We've got some cool other objects to look at. I'd like one of my astro. I'd like one of my astrophotographer buddies here to go to Charlie Brown's Christmas tree. Okay, I'll move on to the next one if you get off my screen. Good grief, Charlie Thank Brown. You. <laughs> I'm not sure with Michael. I don't know if you've got any more you'd like to add to the old Christmas comet. Oh, anybody got any questions on it? Oh, here we go. If the sun rises at the back of my house and the sun sets at the front of my house, where do I look to see it? Sue, you look towards the direction that the sun sets and slightly south of where the sun's setting is west. And you want to look slightly south or sort of south, 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 or west, southwest, wasn't it? West southwest. West southwest. Ah, what is a good comet stacking software? Well, I used Astro Pixel Processor last night, and it worked quite fine. Um, not sure what the other guys using. No, what? Sorry, Santa Noel. What did you thank use? You, thank you. Thank you. Yes, Astro Pixel Processor did the job for me last night as well. There we go. Two for APP. I'm not sure what the others have used. Um, Michael, what do you use? um maxim dl i've never heard of that yes oh well, okay i'm getting some iron tail now oh we'll wait for we'll wait for you then and while you do that emily has just joined the stream and wants to know <laughs> where to look because she doesn't have oh. clouds um i'd say hit rewind but that's really mean and we're not mean we're, we're not grinches not like the front yard grinch grinch astronomer um oh, be quiet. Emily, you need to look uh west southwest and you'll see you so you sort of looking as you can see on the screen there oh, oh. we've lost our connection there it is you'll see saturn underneath copernicus on the screen here oh can we go back to your there we go there's saturn there and then sort of to the left of saturn above venus almost straight up but not quite uh in that west southwest direction bit of a triangle bit of a triangle between three if you can't see venus try and detect saturn it's a little faint small orangey looking star um that's probably the best uh aaron uh how far the comet is from saturn uh how many uh, fingers the... sorry how many fingers how many finger widths? Right. 15 yeah. degrees, did we say? Uh, 13 degrees. So it's 13 uh, degrees. about a hand span. About a, hand, a span. hand span. So if you can find Saturn and hold your hand, hand up out in front of you, and it's about a hand span away from Saturn, keep Saturn to your right hand side of your hand. Well, that's the other one. Get a star map app. The problem with those is, as good as they are, they don't always. Um, south isn't always south, and west isn't yeah. always west. Um, the biggest they problem can... they have is is your the compass. Yep. You on your phone, you know, especially when it comes to being around any other metallic or magnetic objects. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. If it... Did you say it was 13 degrees away from Saturn? Yes, 13 degrees. 26 small fingernails. <laughs> what is that? 26, 26 small fingernails. Small fingernails. <laughs> 26 small fingernails. Okay. So a small fingernail is about half a degree. So about the sort of size oh. of the full moon. Believe it or not. Whoops. <laughs> held What's out as far as you can hold it. What's the best star app, guys? I use Sky Safari on my phone and I use Stellarium on the computer. Yeah. I did have to download all of the plugins for Stellarium to get the comet to appear. Um, what do you use, Steve? So I use Sky Safari on my iPad and my iPhone. And I use, I've actually got the Pro version, but the Plus version is also really, really, really good. Uh, and I think maybe on offer at the moment because they've just released a new version 7. So they normally do it at 50%. Um, so it's it's still a few dollars. It's about kind of like $17 or $18 or something, but it's a, apt for a lifetime. And then I use Stellarium on, uh, uh, on my laptop on the PC. 
which uh, yeah. which is really good as well. And that's free. It's free. It's free. We like a free app. Amory's moved out to the dome. No, she said she had. She's tricked us. I'm she's back. Us. She's back. So Neil, Neil has. Um, oh, well. We should have got Neil on this stream. Neil, how dare you have work to do instead of coming on our stream with us? Measure the, measuring the distance of the sky at an arm's length, your thumb covers one degree, your fist covers 10 degrees, and your hand span covers 20 degrees ish. Yeah. So your yeah. little finger is about half a degree. And your little finger is about half a degree. My little finger is a bit broken as, at the moment. As long as you're not Robert Ludlow. <laughs> now, Michael, you're talking yeah, about an, an eye on Ooh. tail, were you before? Oh, man. This is insane. This is and absolutely spectacular. Yeah, I can Talk see. Talk about now. multiple. Actually, there are multiple ion tails, as you can see. Mm. There are multiple streamers here. Um, I'm not sure if you can see my um, yeah, my we mouse. Can see that. Yeah, yeah, yep. the mouse. Yeah, so basically, the dust tail is is this parabolic hood here. You can see they're very bright yep. green uh, wow. coma here. Yep, that's 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 due to diatomic carbon. So, and and this is pretty much a huge amount of dust that's just been released from the head. And that you'll see these thin streamers of iron tail. Now, now I've I've seen some fantastic um, comma photographers that have taken time lapse image of these, and and you can actually see them move in in real time. So yeah, if I take it, yeah, you know, yeah, it's phenomenal. You just you just stack them all together and create a movie, and you'll just see the tail just flick around in real time. It's like like I said, it's like a wind sock. So as a, as a solar the solar wind pushes against the comet and, and just flaps flaps that tail about. It's a re very spectacular. Michael, how, how far yeah. is that ion tail going behind the comet? Uh, well, this this is a this is a three degree field, so that's probably well, two it, goes a, it goes quite a bit further than the field of view, though. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, to the edge. Wow. Yeah, quite so, a nice. Yeah. Got to get got to get a wide. A, a we need a wide angle shot on it. <laughs> uh, Andy, oh, where's yeah. your wide angle shot? Are you still got yours there or jump back to Andy's? No, no, he hasn't. No, I'm I'm I can go back again though. It might take me a minute. No, 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 it's all right, it's all right, all good, all good. All I'm just good. looking for the next one. Oh, you're moving to the next object, <laughs> the, the boring <laughs> objects. No, they're not. This is great. So, we've got a few people who can't see it with the naked eye. It really does depend on where you are um and how much light pollution is in your way but in good locations it should be visible to the naked eye um i know it's definitely visible easily in binoculars in small telescopes so i think we might Anne marie i believe has got the next object up which is charlie brown's christmas tree <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> We're at school in Charlie Brown. <laughs> oh, no, that was funny. I love it. That was well played. He might be a great astronomer and he might be living in Cloudwood, but he does have a humor bone in him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, before we jump onto the Christmas, whoop, the Christmas tree. Um, what would you see with the naked eye? It'd be a very small, fuzzy dot. Would that be the best way to describe it, Steve? Yeah, the comet. <laughs> the comet? Yeah. Yeah, a small, fuzzy dot. It's about what you would see naked eye. Uh, until what time? So it's about Mac 3, isn't it? Yeah, about that. Yeah, so until what time? I think about 11 ish or just after 11. I mean, it all, it all depends where you are, really. If you've got buildings in the way, I know for me it was gone by about 10, 10 30 last night behind the buildings. Um, yeah, so just depends where you are. But tomorrow night it'll be even better uh, if it doesn't disintegrate anymore. Yeah. So if, uh, Saturn, I think, is about Mag 2 at the moment. Uh, yeah, so if the comet is Mag 3, then it's about half as bright, if that kind of makes any sense. I think so that's how it works, isn't it? Naked eye visible in Shepherd and looks like a tiny star. It does. It looks like yeah. a tiny blurry little star. So now this is uh, Charlie Brown's Christmas tree. And Steve, I'm going to hand it back to you to talk a little bit about this one. 
Can anyone there see a Christmas tree? I mean, Sorry, I think Charlie it's Brown's Christmas time. tree was a pretty regular Sorry, thing, wasn't it? Look, we, we, Claire and I spoke about this a couple of weeks ago. We, we, we spoke about this particular object. And I, for the life of me, cannot see a Christmas tree unless it's a mangled Christmas tree. No, it's on its side. Oh, it is on its side, but it looks a bit yeah. mangled still. Well, that's what Charlie Brown was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you tell we're in a jolly mood tonight? We really are. <laughs> End of the year. Uh, so tell us a little bit about this this apparent right. Christmas tree cluster. Some some information. So this is NGC two three six seven is its uh, sort of technical um, ID. So new general catalogue two three six seven. It's an open cluster. So that's a, a a collection of stars that are gravitationally attracted to one another. Um, it's Quite, quite a way away for an open cluster, 7,200 light years. And we're in the constellation Canis Major. So the, the great dog, which uh, is sort of just off to the uh, east of, uh, well, sort of south, I suppose we'll say, of Orion uh, at the moment. So fairly low over in uh, towards the eastern horizon. Um, the, the open cluster as a whole is magnitude 7.9. So this is not something that you would be able to see naked eye, but you'd probably see it as a, a just a bit of a, a, a glimmer in a pair of binoculars, uh, but not any detail. So it was discovered by William Herschel, Sir William Herschel, back in 1784. And as with a lot of open clusters, it's actually quite young. So the, the stars in this cluster are only about 6 million years old. Uh, and then, hot stars that uh, uh, shine with a, a fairly intense blue kind of colour. We can't really see that in, in this. Um, mono. Yeah, oh, you're on a, a mono, yeah. yeah. So, uh, um, as I say, for hot blue stars. I don't know how many, I didn't get any information about how many stars there are in the, in the cluster. There's obviously quite a lot of, of background stars visible as well uh, because we're, we're looking through Canis Major so we're seeing uh, quite a lot of Milky Way uh, in the image there as well. Um, that's probably uh, as much information as, as I've got on that. Uh, there is some nebulosity apparently around uh, the, uh, um, the open cluster uh, and it does sit, the, the open cluster itself does sit within a much bigger uh, uh, nebulous area, uh, what's called a, a star-forming supershell, um, uh, and uh, that star-forming supershell is a massive structure uh, spanning hundreds of light years. Um, so we're only seeing a little little part of it, obviously. So we're looking out towards the outskirts of the galaxy, um, uh, out with with this. Someone's got a very loud clicky mouse and for once me. it's not me. Me. It's usually me. <laughs> I'm nearly finished. Just trying to get ahead. I think, oh, I think while we wait, we've got a couple of other objects. I know there's a few people watching now that may not have seen the comet and everyone wants to see the comet. So while we're waiting for the next one, we're going to jump back to the comet. Oh, look Good at that God. tail. Look at that tail, mate. That's, that's just oh, come out long. That's going nuts. Yeah. It's going nuts. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Seriously, everyone, if you know someone who wants to see the comet and it's cloudy, send them over. Tag, 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 because that's a cracking view. That is unbelievable. It it's is. so wispy. And, and just the way, like, you, the, the tail is meant to be pointing away from the sun, but as you can see, that it's bend, see that massive bend in it? Yes, mm -hmm. it's it's just being it's getting flicked around by the the solar wind, so it can it can it can deflect by you know five ten degrees, or or even more. Um, yeah, that that is that is just a phenomenal view. This is one of the best comets I've uh, imaged off late. <laughs> probably the best, probably the best since uh, Comet Lovejoy in twenty uh, in two thousand eleven. So oh, there you go. Not, so not actually. It's not in the same class, I'm afraid. This is not a great comet. This is just a a, a nice, uh, mm. yeah, a nice comet. 
Come on, love, <laughs> come on, love, joy. I, I, I was looking at 30, 40 degrees of tail with my naked eye. That's that's a difference. Yes. So yeah, there, there's a, you know, there's there, there's a difference between a a, a nice yes. comet, a fine comet, and a, and a great comet. Well, I saw someone there is uh, asking Santa for a telescope. Yeah, I, I know. I, I actually saw someone else. Asking, can you but tell us what equipment you're using, Michael? Yeah. The, yes. So, yes. Yeah, so Stacey the... would like to know because she's going to ask Santa. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's a, a Roe Ackerman Schmidt Astrograph, RASA for short, and it's an 11 inch. Um, you, you can get 8 inch varieties. You can get 14 inch varieties, and I'd love a 14 inch. Oh, Santa, <laughs> Santa, Maybe hello, you Santa. Ask Santa. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, what I do need, I need a better camera because this is just the standard stock standard 6D. Uh, you do get better performance when you use the old cold moss, cold moss um, um, cameras. But uh, this, the Ooh, good thing about the 11 inch is that it's actually a full frame, so it's it's capable of getting the the full frame. So I'm getting three by two degree field of view, which is which is really really nice, especially mm. when you're imaging comet tails. So there we are. It's the perfect aspect ratio that it's uh, fitting right within the vignetting that you are getting because of the full frame. Yeah, I, I have I have taken the uh, flats, so I'll uh, when I spend a bit of time, I'll do some uh, processing to try and flatten that field out. Mm. That'll be my next job. So I'll show you that later tonight. <laughs> I think we're all a bit lost for words at how impressive this is coming up. It's almost just been the perfect night for it. And or Andy, can you leave that picture there? We were how many images do you have of that one? Oh. There we go. So this is what you were talking about, Michael. Actually, that's that's McNaught, which which was in two thousand seven. Yeah. The comic McNaught. That one. That, that was even finer. This this one this one is the comet of the century. You get one of these every hundred years. Yep, it was fantastic. What about the one that we had last year? Because that was a brilliant bit of a ripper. Not for us, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I got a great photo of it. I can't remember what was it, Atlas. Oh dear, oh dear, there are there are, there are so many. <laughs> I have to go and have a look. <laughs> I think Atlas is on our list. So it might have been uh, on no, its no, way. No, Borelli's you know. on our list. Oh, it could oh, it could be Atlas. Yeah, it could be another one. Um, well, yeah, Neowise was Neowise was Neowise. That's that was it. Neowise. Fine comet of 2020. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was quite nice, but it was predominantly a northern hemisphere object. So this this time it's our turn. Got a great Got to share the love. Now I'm going to ask if anybody has our third object. I'm nearly um, on it. Nearly on it. Nearly on it. Yep. Yeah. Just I have to do a refocus because it was. Santa, is that the one that you've got on your screen? Almost. It's just a uh, just a lining up. Okay. All right. So I will quickly tell everybody what we're looking at next, which is the which is Sharples or is it Sharples two? Sh Sh Sharples. Sh yeah, Sharples. Yeah, three hundred two yes. Snowman Nebula. So this one apparently looks like a snowman. And I'm going to jump across to. Santa's because there's some cool lights there and we'll just watch Santa's for a second and we'll see if it starts to appear. So th this is one's Santa's jumping ahead a little. This, is, this one's jumping ahead a little and I may have to isolate because this is Omicron. Oh, that's no, no, we're not ready for that yet. Yeah, well, no. not ready for that one yet. That joke's too early. <laughs> Don't steal my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back to the comet while we wait. So, what have you done there, Michael? What have I done? Yeah. Oh no, I'm just opening up another image. This is an, this is another image. Um, that I that I that I haven't had time to process yet. <laughs> so I'll just I'll just uh, I'll sh I'll show you what I do if you if you're that keen. Just trying to get the color balance right, and uh, it's it's very hard in the initial sort of instance. You sort of don't know what sort of colour it's going to be or turn out until you've uh, built it around. It's all about the processing side of things. Colour, colour is one of the hardest 
hardest things you get right in in astronomy in the astrophotography mm. getting the balance of your rgb so oh, the, norm, normally these iron tails should be should be a deep blue so you can see that that balance isn't quite right Yes, Drew, you're spot on. Typical, perfect weather in Melbourne and then cloud. <laughs> That's what we love about it, isn't it, as, as astronomers? We love the Melbourne weather. I hate it. Yeah, the front yard Grinch astronomer. Well, you live in Cloudwood. That's why you hate it. Now, we have uh, a good question by Ryan here. It looks amazing. What are the comets to watch out for next year? What about now? <laughs> <laughs> this is like, we've seen this one. This, is, this comment is so like twenty minutes ago. It's like yeah, I've seen it. What's next? Okay, yeah, well, actually, guess what? Next. Yeah, in December mm -hmm. next year, you're going to get another fine comet. In December? Will, yes, exactly. And that's uh, that will be 2017 K2, and. Uh, that, uh, I was trying to think of what that was. Was that Pan Stars? Oh God! I'm just... You put me on the spot there now. That's um, the best way to do it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Pan Stars 2017 K2, and that'll be actually a southern circumpolar object. All right, what's a southern circumpolar object? What does that mean? Oh, yeah, because I know we're going to get asked. So let's answer. It. <laughs> it means it won't set. It's especially up all night, pretty much. Yeah, just goes around like the pole. It's it like just us. goes around and around the circle. <laughs> Michael, I think I think it was uh it was at the Christmas star party. I, you might have been. Um, you were explaining how the um the designations, like you you mentioned this other one's two thousand and seventeen K two. Yes, I'm, I know what that means. <laughs> well, either Michael can answer it, or you can take a no, drink. I'm, I'm like, I'm, ah. No, because I'll probably answer it wrong. Go, Michael. No, no, I'm putting you on the spot. Like you're, I'm putting you on the spot now. Come oh, on. Put me on the spot. Isn't that the year it was discovered? <laughs> yes. And, and what about the rest? I don't know That's what the rest time. means. Don't ask me what the rest means. I just know what the number means. But just, <laughs> it's just it was basically fortnightly. So A is your first fortnight of the year. B is the second fortnight. C, D, and so on. And two is the the second comet of the of that for, discovered in that fortnight, etc. And at and I think you were telling me that, uh, so, but we don't have, is it I? There's no I? That's right, yeah. Because it's or, too close to... Z. Yeah, it's too close to the one. Is that because yeah. there's no I in team? <laughs> there's no I in Comet either. No, there's not. That's it, that's right. But there is a me. But there is a team. <laughs> 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 now, so, somebody earlier, I missed it, but somebody mentioned that uh, we were so happy because, I can't remember what it was now, must be all the Christmas spirit making you all so jolly. Um, might not be the Christmas spirit, um, but we're just having a blast. <laughs> we are having a blast. It, it's It's been a big year. It's been a long year. Uh, we've all had a long year, uh, that's for sure, and it's just nice to be able mm. to, just before Christmas, bring all of these objects to you these christmas themed objects but we kind of seem to be stuck on this awesome comet at the moment um we do have some other objects where we will get to them it's just nice to be able to share this this with you guys um mm -hmm. we hope you have enjoyed our streams throughout the year we've loved bringing them to you that's for sure uh we have a question what would be a good first telescope to get photos with an iphone or a dslr oh i reckon i could answer that one Go for it. Um, let's let's go back here. You can see you know, behind me here with the reindeer antlers on it. Um, I think we're all up brand new. That's about seven, six, seven hundred dollars worth of equipment. It's an eighty mil short tube. It's a Skywatcher Star Adventurer, fairly cheap tripod, and I have a phone adapter, and I use my phone. And that is it. Uh, that's all I use to do what I do, imaging with a phone. It's a very good starter kit. Um, and it makes for a fun challenge, that's for sure. Uh, I haven't quite got a Galaxy yet. Oh, no, I lied. I got a single exposure of Andromeda with it. Um, so that, that sort of thing with a phone, 
Uh, yes, I don't use an iPhone. I use a P30, a Huawei P30 iPhone. iPhone's the same. It's all the same. Um, so that's the sort of thing mm-hmm. I use. It's uh, very easy to set up. It's lightweight, easy, portable, and simple. That's how it's. That's how I think you should start if you're going to start with a phone. Uh, what have we got? So, Mark, you're using a, it's a tracking mount, though, isn't it? It is a tracking mount and surprisingly easy to align. It's shocked, except for the last few nights because of the moon and the cloud. So ignore those last two nights. It's actually been surprisingly easy to align for somebody who's never used a tracking mount before. Um, apps help and pointing south helps. And, and then, yeah, you set. Good binoculars for stargazing and things like this comet. Steve, this is a you question. Um. Yeah, so uh, 7B50s or 10B50s, that kind of thing. Uh, if you spend a couple of hundred dollars, you'll, you'll, uh, I, the, the binoculars I've got are 10B50s um, and uh, they cost me about $200. And that's how I started uh, all those many years ago. Um, the, I still bring the, the binoculars out every so often. They're great for, because they give you about, a five degree field of view, uh, whereas through a telescope, you're gonna get at the most about a one degree field of view, depending on uh, what sort of eyepiece you're using. So uh, 70-50s, 10-50s, something like that. Um, like, the, like these ones? Uh, sort of, uh, exactly like those, yeah. So these are the ASVs. Um, I somehow have about a dozen of these sitting around. Um, for our star parties, so if you come to one of our star parties, you can borrow these. Uh, seven by fifties, these are, and you're right. I saw the comet foot down at the beach the other night with these. Um, they were perfect for it, and I often sit in the backyard um, while I'm imaging and have the binoculars and just stare up at the sky, see what I can find. So it's not cloudy everywhere. Clear skies in Rosebud. Um, Jan, I'm not going to say anything, but yeah. uh, chainsaw, yeah. getting that Christmas spirit, cut the tree down, no one will know, and then you'll be able to see the comet. Well, the clouds are coming uh, from down there to my place, so that means that it should be clear soon. No, you're in cloud, but it won't, <laughs> it won't clear anytime soon for you. No. Oh, look, it's clear in Creswick as well. Is that Creswick uh, or Creswick? Uh, Stop. Creswick. I call it Creswick, and if it's called Creswick, I don't care. Um, yeah, Stacey, star party. Be yes, star parties. The Astronomical Society of Victoria has three star parties a year. The Christmas one, which we had about when was that? Two, two, weeks, two weeks ago. Two weeks. Yeah, three ago weeks. Ago. Well, a week and a half ago now. Fourth and fifth um, of uh, December. No, it was the eleventh of December. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, um, we were doing something else uh, the week before, then. Eh? Yeah, we were. Oh, that's right. We were a man Yeah. Um, and no, degree. we weren't skiing. It was cold enough to ski. We weren't skiing. No, we were doing oh. an astronomy event up there at the top of Mount Buller, which was a lot of fun. Um, so star parties. We had a Christmas one about a week and a half ago. It was open to the general public as well. I think we had over two hundred and fifty people there. We have the Messy Star Party. Uh, in March, and we have the Galactic Centre Star Party in September. Both of those are member-only events. So if you're um, – and no, I see you've written there, Victoria, a bit too far for me. We have a member in Queensland. We have members in Brazil. We have a member in Germany. Uh, you name it, they're all over the shop. And when they come to Victoria as a member, you are entitled to go to our Dark Sky site uh, and you're entitled to come to our star parties as a member. And the December one is open to the public. Now, has anyone got our next object? Oh, Anne Marie has. Oh, look at that. It's upside down. Upside down. Yeah, upside, upside down. Upside down. Poor, poor little man. <laughs> Someone's pushed a snowman on his head. <laughs> <laughs> now, Steve, we're going to hand, handball back to you. Sharpless 2 302 is the designation for this one. So, this is an emission nebula. So it's uh, ionized gas, um, um, 5,800 light years away, and this is in the constellation Puppets. So we were in Canis Major 
for the uh, the open cluster, the um, Charlie Brown's Christmas um, sort of mask. Um, this one is the next constellation sort of heading south um, round, which is Puppies. Um, and uh, this is, uh, oh, I don't have a magnitude for this one, interestingly. Now, uh, what we have to look out for here is, so this is in monochrome again, Anne-Marie, so I think... Uh, no, it, H, yeah, it's HA. It's a HA. Okay. Thing. So, if, got, if, um, so this would be a, have a reddish tinge to it, I think, if it was uh, in colour. Um, but the, there's a couple of things to look out for here. Um, over on the right hand, uh, just beyond the edge of the snowman, you can see there's uh, a little open cluster there, and that's NGC 2409. And I do have a magnitude for that, which is 7.3. Over on the other side, uh, which we can't really see at the moment, there's actually a little reflection nebula which would be in blue and i don't think we can see it no it's not the head it's it's sort of the opposite side of the snowman you, you can't see it so don't worry mm -hmm. um but uh that's uh that's a shame because you get this sort of the snowman in the middle and then the little reflection nebula mm -hmm. on one side and the little open cluster on the right hand side i agree but, yeah, with Janine. it looks like an upside down bauble an upside down look like an upside down bauble Yep. Yes. Yes, I can see that as well. Yeah. So it's a snowman with a sort of collar around his neck, I suppose. Is it a collar or is it's it a tie? Scarf? It's a scarf. Scarf. It's a scarf. scarf. Yep. Yep. And I yep. reckon that's that's the carrot for his Blake. Nose. Blake wants to know if comets have different colours. If so, then why, Blake? We're going to probably come back to that one. Wait for uh, Michael to come back. Hi. He's having a short break. He will join us again. Blake um, Edwards, I, I didn't think he was still around. Different person. Oh, okay. So to give you an idea oh, of the size of this as well, so this is 15 arc minutes uh, in size. How many fingers? Uh, so I think that's uh, that's about half a small fingernail, is it? One and a half thumbs. Is it that big? 15 art minutes. Uh, no, so it's a quarter of a degree. Quarter of a degree. Half. Oh, half okay. A, art minutes, yeah. Half, half a small fingernail. Half a small fingernail. Whose small fingernail are we cutting in half? Not mine. But the thing is, you know, it, it, it works because typically people who have smaller fingernails have shorter arms. So, because <laughs> children. So. Yeah. So, which which means the uh, which means which means the overall focal length. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, now, you do you know when this was discovered? Absolutely not. I can perhaps do some quick research if you want. Well, I can tell you when it was discovered. It was discovered oh, twice. It was discovered in 1959 by Stuart Sharples. Sharples, yeah. Sharples, Sharples, Sharples. I say I say Mari, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> My use of English language is not the best, and I'm happy to admit that. Uh, but it was also discovered earlier, four years earlier, by Colin Gum. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's also known yeah. as Gum, Gum Six. Something. Gum Six. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Bagum. I got something on the smart people. Woo, go me. Now, are we ready for our? Um, our next object, Noel. Are you on our next object? <clears throat> no, I'm on the uh, the one after. Oh. <laughs> Shoe jumping, I tell you what. Well, I can't see the the next one. It's I got three. I got real trees. It's the next oh. one. Two two six four. Yep. Okay. I'm going to head there now. All right. While you do that, we will go to. Are oh, you on two three nine one? Are you, Noel? Correct. All right. All right. Now, this is I, I asked politely to have this put on the list, uh, and only because every time I hear the name, I think of this cluster. And this and is what I oh, you said you sorry, forget. I did. Sorry, yeah, I, I did. I, yeah, I see um, it. Hmm. Yeah, and th and this is uh, and the other like, I was imaging this last night myself, and I, I I can't help but think of this as the COVID cluster because it's Omicron Valorum cluster. The only other thing I can think of is Futurama with Omicron Persei eight. 
and the aliens. Omicron, and- Percy A8. Blur. Um, but yes, I call this the COVID cluster now because um, it's the Omicron cluster. And it's a, it's an open cluster. And I know it's above Etta Carina. It's in one of the false cross. Oh, just outside of one of the false crosses, isn't it, Steve? You're dead right. Yeah. Yes. Let's take those points. It's it's visible to the naked eye as well because it's magnitude two point six. Yes, I could see it last night actually, even through the haze. It's an interesting um, little interesting little object. Yeah, that, the brightest of those stars is Omicron Valorum. So the the cluster is actually named after that that star. So if um, you're, what you're saying is if we get rid of that star, Omicron goes. It will be a star cluster in Valor. Yeah. <laughs> and it is it's so much more beautiful than oh. COVID. Absolutely yeah. so much more beautiful than COVID. A um, couple of... Um, so there's about 30 stars, apparently, in the cluster. Um, and again, these are, are pretty young stars. Um, they cover... Uh, so as you can see, we're, we're spread quite a way across the field of view. They cover an area of about 50 arc minutes, so nearly one degree. So that's uh, a thumbnail. Uh, we're good doing this describing with the side, you know, the degrees and all that, aren't we? Um, um, so because it's naked eye, this was it. The, we didn't have to wait until somebody discovered the. the invented the telescope to actually describe this object. So our good friend Al Sufi uh, was the first to describe it. He's a Persian astronomer back in 964 AD. I like so how I he's what... our good friend. Like we, we, we still know him. We hang out. <laughs> no, another interesting thing here is that this the Omicron Valorum, the star and the cluster, would originally have been called Omicron Argus because it was part of the much larger Argo Navis constellation. Uh, so Vela is... Is, where, is, Eda, is that where Eta Argus came from? Um, maybe, I don't know. Because that's what Eta Carina used to be. That's it? right, Eta yes. Argus. So, uh, okay. so the, the star designations that we have, like Eta and Omicron, related originally to the whole of the Argo Navis constellation, which included um, Vela, Carina, and Puppis, and another little one as well. The, is it Pixis or something like that? The, there's another small one which was part of it. And then um, when they sort of reshuffle the constellations around, they decided that Argo Navis was just too blinking big. So they broke it up into its constituent elements. Yeah, we've got a couple of Argo Navises up at the Dark Sky site. They work pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Run our telescopes. Um, I think my parents would be proud, Steve. It looks like I'm actually learning stuff. <laughs> Paying attention, finally. Is paying attention in science class, finally. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Aaron wants to thank us for the finger descriptions of degrees. It's helpful for him at least, <laughs> even if we are talking about chopping fingers up. I did that this morning. Chopped your finger up? I Yeah, drilled it with a drill. Got to stop drilling it with a drill. Yeah. All right, so I think we'll jump across to the next object which is the Christmas tree cluster. Ooh. And Emery, um, if you want to do it in narrowband, go for it, I say. Okay. Because then we can get some of that nebulosity and we can see the other nebulas yeah. and clusters that are contained within this one big cluster. I can only get, so like, I can only get a small portion of it. So somebody yeah. with a, like an ED80 is probably going to get a better view of this one. I just noticed we've lost Andy. He's dropped off. His, his internet must have been too, doing pretty well. They've moved so the tower the again. The Christmas tree cluster also, well, doesn't contain it within it, but in the field of view is um, the Fox Nebula and the Cone Nebula are all Which tucked into this one. Can't see all on mine. I can't fit it all in. No, that's okay. We won't. We won't hold that. No, no. Have you got this one? Oh no, he's got this um, one too. Santa, no, Santa, not, that, that's Santa. Not Christmas to you. tree. Who's, who's got a smaller scope? I do. I also uh, have the uh, cloud stuff. 
Yeah, oh. <laughs> the Grinch, the front yard Grinch astronomer's got it, um, but mm. he can't get it. And Andy uh, has lost his internet connection, so he can't get it either. And I think so my dome's he... interfering here too because it's getting a bit dark in the corner there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get rid of that dome. <laughs> Give me 20000 and I'll get a new one. <laughs> uh, government grant. <laughs> That'd be nice. It would be, wouldn't it? Mm. You can start to see some, some nebulosity in this Yeah, you well. can. So, Steve, I'm going to handball it to you while Anne-Marie starts to... Um, I'll have to go and move the dome, though. <laughs> All right, go and move the dome while we have a look at this. You, you go off and do that. Don't worry about us. We, okay. We've got this. So, oh, yours, Steve. Oh, thank you. This is NGC 2264. Uh, I think the most Christmassy of the objects tonight, given that it's got the word Christmas in there. Um, it's an, uh, another open cluster. Um, 2,200 light years away, and we're in Monoceros, uh, which is um, sort of between Orion and Canis Major, down a bit. So we're actually still fairly close to the eastern horizon uh, at the moment. So there's about 80 stars in this, um, and it's in the whole of this area is a, an extensive area of nebulosity, which you can you can start to as we've suggested, you can start to see some of it uh, showing there. Um, now, what I'm I'm just thinking, trying to work out with the orientation of it here, because uh, um, you should be able. That what looks like the cone nebula isn't the cone nebula, I don't think. Uh, I think in the it might be. It's pointing downwards, uh, I think. It's the wrong way, isn't it? Um, but um, I'm not sure. I was thinking the cone nebula. The cone nebula is at the point of the Christmas tree, at the at the, the, the top of the Christmas tree, which uh, um, I'm struggling with a little bit. And the cone nebula points away from the point of the Christmas tree. So it's kind of the wrong way around there. You can tell Anne Marie she's got it the wrong way around. <laughs> so it's got a, not only move the not only move the not only move the dome a little bit, turn it upside down. Yeah. <laughs> um it's it's probably yeah, it's um, as would normally be seen from here, um, what's that? Flip it uh, clockwise about 130 degrees. I think, yeah, about, 100, about 135 degrees if you spin it clockwise. So hang on, while we're waiting for Steve to get his bearings... Uh, any apps you would recommend for beginners, Skyview, Star Tracker? Um, App-wise, we're talking, uh, I mean, I, as I say, I use Sky Safari. I quite like that one on my phone. And I use Stellarium because it's free on the computer and it has everything in it. So I recommend those two. Yeah, Stellarium oh, certainly. If you've got a laptop, then Stellarium, I think, is the way to go and you can learn your way around the, the night sky. I use Stellarium uh, for doing uh, virtual uh, sky for the night sessions, uh, uh, which we uh, we do with schools and, and scout groups and occasionally with some of these live streaming sessions when we're clouded out. So I think um, we, we all now uh, have a new best friend, Stacy. Uh, thank you, Stacey, for those wonderful words. Uh, her first time tuning in tonight, she's in awe of us and could watch and listen to us for hours. Fascinating and incredible. Uh, we are all... Oh, Andy's back. He's back and he's meaner than ever. <laughs> Welcome back, Andy. Where have you been? He's grown a beard oh, in about... He's grown a beard as well now. <laughs> um, Stacey, we are all volunteers. That's how long uh, is internet? We, we do this because we love doing what we do we love sharing the night sky um so we, we we were at one stage doing these oh my god i feel like we just had the um the emperor just rock up there when michael came back with the red torch really bright there that was not too much lee will get um Australia oh yeah disney will disney will not like that at all 
Um, yeah, we do these in lockdown. We did these probably every couple of weeks for at, at one stage. Uh, we did a couple of weekend long sessions where we had just different streams. We just love streaming and sharing the night sky. It's a lot of fun, as you can tell. And we have a lot of fun doing it. Now, Amory's back. Um, Steve was complaining about your workmanship. Um, That's Amory. terrible. I don't I know. know what's going on there. I know. He was complaining. I can't I but the, other, the the ones that I did before, it wasn't showing. Like, there's no bad stars in there, so I don't know. I, I think nice it's spikes in there. It's pretty it's bright that other one. Yeah, I don't know. It's in luminator, uh, lumens. So um, I'm just redoing it now in uh, HA. Okay, so we're waiting for a hydrogen alpha version to appear, which will have that's probably coming for its buck. That's probably coming off the fact that you've got the um the dome there. It's just it's causing a bit of a yeah yeah refraction. I've moved, I've moved the dome now too. <laughs> yeah. So oh, I can have this. oh, it's like a love in. It's an absolute love fest at the moment in the comment section. I echo Stacey's comment. First time on your live stream session and enjoying it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very, very much appreciate it. I'm just gonna... uh, Andrew. They were fantastic during lockdown. Really appreciate it. Tell you what, Andrew. If there was one thing that got me through lockdown, it was hosting these live streams. It really was. I used to just look forward to them. It was so much fun. Uh, Joe. First night for me too. Thanks, everyone. Well, Joe, all you have to do is like and subscribe, and every time we have a live stream, you will see it pop up in your feed. Mm. Well, Andy's back again. Andy, you look like a, Where am look I? Like, a, like a raving a raving elf. <laughs> you need to be at a nightclub, you know, just rocking out. You know, rocking out. Busting <laughs> some moves or something. Yeah. Hey, look. I've got my oh Mona Lisa's still there. Yay, Mona she's Lisa. with us still. She hasn't gone. For those who are tuning in for the first time, that Mona Lisa picture has been there through every live stream for the last nearly two years. Yeah. <laughs> At some point it's been covered in blood or fake blood for our <laughs> Halloween. Yeah, Halloween. Uh, <laughs> so if you if you are tuning in for the first time, every single one of our live streams since lockdown started in March last year, I think our first live stream is about June. Or July of last year, um, they're all on YouTube still. Uh, you can go to our YouTube channel and you can watch them all back and have a laugh at us embarrassing ourselves and sharing the night sky. There's some pretty cool um, objects. There's the there was the Cartwheel Galaxy, which I'll never forget that we imaged or Emery imaged, and it's like 500 million light years away, and it was just mind blowing to see this bizarre looking galaxy. Um, absolutely stunning, it was. I think not only that was Anne Marie's astonishment at, at actually capturing something that far away. Yeah, uh, yeah, and the quality as well. So if you haven't, go through them, have a look at them. There's a whole summer holidays worth to watch during our next lockdown for you to all see. So catch up, viewing. <laughs> next lockdown. <laughs> well, next lockdown. It's in about a, it's in about a week's time. No, it's probably in about a week and a half. We'll all be back in lockdown. Yeah. Uh, no, we won't. TJ, first time watching a comet. Amazing. TJ, when I saw it last night through binoculars, it was the first time I'd seen a comet myself. And then seeing it tonight with Michael's um, imaging, wow, just wow. Absolutely mind-blowing it was. It's, that's the H-alpha. Oh, you, it's going to look good when you... All right, we're gonna give that a little bit. While we give that a little bit, let's just let's just blow people's minds again with our comment because that's I've done the better. I've, I've done the flat fielding now. That's not that's a flat field. Oh wow, that tail's really come out, hasn't it? Oh, nice, phenomenal. Mm. I'll say an iPod here. <laughs> no, not quite. There's always room for improvement. So, Michael, you know you're using, Michael, you're using a color camera. Yeah, just a 16. And, and 20, 16. 20 second exposures. This was a stack of six, so it's three minutes worth. Okay. Don't yep. tell her your secrets. No, they don't. Yeah. Tomorrow night. But the, old, the tricky thing is, like, the comet has moved in those three minutes, so so the, the tail mm. has actually blurred a bit. If if yep. I if I stack on the comet, you would get a lot sharper um, sharper streamers than that. Yep. But that's not a bad bloody photo, mm. is it? 
It's you know what? damn impressive. It seriously is. Something that, <laughs> something that just occurred. Something just occurred to me. We've got um, actually the next object on the list. If we get to it. If we get to it, actually looks very much like that. It kind of does, actually. <laughs> the yeah, pencil yeah, nebula. Yeah. The pencil. It's. I, I reckon it's. It's almost Santa's, exactly Santa's like that. On it. Here we go. Santa's on it. Here we go. E so it's, there you go. It kind of does have that wispiness to it, doesn't it? Yeah. So we did Pencil Nebula because Anne-Marie was running out of uh, ideas for our Christmas G1, mm -hmm. and she went, people write letters to each other at Christmas, so we'll put the Pencil Nebula there. <laughs> so this is for all so, of those people who write letters to Santa and write letters to their family at Christmas time, the Pencil which, Nebula. Which, which, which is still my dad at... Uh... Uh, at the age of, um, let me just calculate, 87. Still writes letters. I bet he's glad he's not an opener for the Australian cricket team. That's a bad luck number. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Steve, we still got you? We've, or we we bored you with our random oh, I'm, I'm here still. This is wonderful stuff. Those <laughs> oh, the pictures of that. That's phenomenal. <laughs> Go back, go back to the comment. Uh -huh. uh, um, we will go back to the comment. So NGC2736. Uh, this is uh, Pencil Nebula, as Lee pointed out, also known as Herschel's Ray. Uh, and it's a supernova remnant or part of a supernova remnant. Um, and it's actually part of the huge... Valor supernova remnants, which I know uh, uh, Marie likes taking uh, images of. Uh, so it's about 800 light years away, uh, and it's uh, in the constellation Vela, as the name kind of suggests. It's part of the Vela supernova. And it's uh, the whole thing is pretty bright, so it's magnitude 4.1, but because it's quite a big object, it's uh, not so easy to see, not, not a very easy object to see visually. Um, uh, so it was discovered by John Herschel so in 1835. So John Herschel is William <laughs> Herschel. What is that? Can you mute me? Oh, that's Anne Marie's puppies. Yep, yep. I just, just muted Anne Marie. That's... We were interrupted <laughs> by puppy dogs. Back to it, Steve. <laughs> I hope they're all, are they all right? They're just being puppy-ish. <laughs> <laughs> John Herschel is William, William Herschel's son. Uh, so uh, William Herschel was sort of doing his stuff at the back end of the 18th century and John Herschel at the beginning of the 19th century. So he kind of followed on where his dad left off. Um, you can start to see some of the sort of filaments uh, in, uh, in that pencil nebula. So... Um, uh, when uh, so supernova obviously is is what happens uh, at the end of a large star's life, so it goes off uh, as a supernova um, in a very um, violent uh, explosion, uh, and these filaments are what's sort of left uh, as the what's left of the supernova kind of passes out through. Uh, into space, uh, what what's left of uh, uh, of that supernova? Um, so um, uh, the, probably uh, the next star that's likely to go supernova that we might may already have gone is uh, Eta Carina, uh, which uh, um, I think Mark was talking about earlier on in the constellation Carina. So uh, that's. That's sort of imminently going to go supernova. So imminently is in the next two hundred thousand years. We got Beetlejuice as well, don't we? Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, uh, Be Beetlejuice. May, may also go. Yeah, but Mary think, will be annoyed if we don't call it Beetlejuice. Yeah, Etacarina has, has obviously already started to show signs of uh, that it's getting ready to do its bit. Um, uh, our sun isn't big enough to to do to. Uh, uh, go supernova. Our sun is a sort of medium-sized um, uh, sun and uh, will form hopefully a nice planetary nebula, uh, which is something that's not quite as violent as supernova. But uh, uh, so um, uh, I don't know whether um, Anne-Marie, 
are you, have you got some broad, wider images of the Vala supernova uh, rather than just the, the pencil nebula? But uh, I don't know whether we're yep. going to look at those later. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm muted, am I? No, I unmuted you. Yeah. No, I'm not muted. The puppy dogs were noisy. That's okay. Yeah, no, he heard his back. Well, how are you going with your um, Christmas tree cluster? Well, I can. Just, I've done one in HA, and I can't see. I'm just trying to figure out why it didn't stack. Which oh, we'll let you do that. We're going to go back to the comet because the comet's looking really good again. Mm. Oh, you've been wow. playing around with it again, haven't you, Michael? You're muted, Michael. You're muted. Hang on. Yeah. Yep. There we right. go. We've got yep. you back. Yeah, look, trying to get the colour balance right is, <sighs> is extremely, That's... extremely painful. Beautiful. It's absolutely You can definitely beautiful. see the blue now, really though, is. on the outer. Yeah. I'm trying to get blue streamers, but, yeah, just, just a bit hard. A bit hard. But... um. I can show you a bit of a trick, actually. If you split the tricolor right, and I'll show you the blue filter, you 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 will see, you can you can see the in the, yeah the blue picks out the the streamers very well, and then if you look at the red, you'll you'll be able to see the the dust tail more easily visible in the middle. Yeah. So, but yeah, all these little streamers here, they're all it's, it's all ion, and that's the green channel. So yeah, combining your RGB, uh, combining your colour, you get all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> different different types of rate, different ratios. Like one one to one to one. Have a look at that. No, that's not good. So yeah, it's it's a it's trial and error really. No, so that's not looking good. We got a couple <laughs> of questions for you, Michael. Yeah, mate. All right, so um, here we go. Our, our new best friend wants to know whether it will be brighter tomorrow night. Actually, no, I, I did dart out for a few minutes there. I had a, had a quick look at the naked eye with the naked eye. Yep. Um, I missed the mating about 3.5, so it's faded by about half a magnitude. As okay, to so yesterday. it's probably going to be – so tonight would have been the best viewing, but as usual, clouds. So aren't we lucky <laughs> we streamed this? <laughs> but look, I tell you what, the view – through um my four inch binoculars was phenomenal absolutely brilliant so four yeah. inch can you talk in like real world numbers in metric <laughs> oh, <you t> <laughs> it's a bit strange isn't it yeah 10 centimeters yes that's right there we go, there we go. <laughs> So yeah, a telescopic, telescopic views will be absolutely spectacular so if anyone's got a telescope of any type it is it is just a beautiful sight tomorrow night then yep we're talking about because yeah yeah most... any the next few nights yep there you go yep there christmas go. night whatever christmas um, eve whatever now ben wants to know how big is the nucleus <laughs> would you believe it's pretty bloody small it's it's pretty it's virtually maybe one to two kilometers across that's it. extremely small yep now, how do we know this <laughs> how do ask, i know this how do you know this and follow up question <laughs> if, <laughs> what damage would it do? <laughs> is it big Sorry? enough to, or is it big enough to cause a problem for earth if it hit earth if it hit not well good because it's not going to but just like just as a well there's, there's, there's two questions there there's two Maybe questions there, so i'll answer the first one right yes <laughs> so how do we know how big it is well fortunately we we've been around a few um comets and uh, one of those is borelli which which I'm, i might show you later <laughs> but i'm too i'm too uh excited by this one <laughs> <laughs> but yeah basically we, we we can estimate a comet's size by its activity so yeah by its absolute magnitude how bright would it be if it were placed one astronomical unit from the earth and one astronomical unit from the sun so we call that the absolute magnitude and this one here was around about the eight mark um yeah and like halley was would appear fifth magnitude it's a much bigger object mm. that was like 15 kilometers across now the second the second question is that you know are comets dangerous well hell yeah they're damn dangerous this this one here um had an extremely close pass to through venus um the orbit of venus um had venus been there um they had the comet turned up 
nearly three days later, it would have had it. It, it may have even collided. The the minimal orbit intersection distance between the, this comet and Venus was uh, exceptionally small. So so just um, I think it was two days ago on the Sunday, Venus passed through the the trail of a comet, and would have got smashed by. Um, Lots of dust particles. It would have had a phenomenal meteor shower. However, there wouldn't have, there wouldn't have been too many observers on Venus because they would have been cooked at four hundred degrees C and it would be <laughs> bloody cloudy. And all the, and all the <laughs> gas. <laughs> It'd be a like Ringwood, must mostly. Yeah, the ring, Ringwood is the new Venus. Uh, so, Stacy says she's calling you tonight, Santa. She needs a telescope ASAP. Expect a phone call. Make sure you can deliver on Christmas Day. Or we'll have one unhappy new follower. Too uh, busy with PS fives, apparently. And that PS fives, like that's like that's so. Yeah, telescopes are all the rage now. Uh, can I still see it tonight if I have a telescope, or am I too late? I guess it depends on where you are. Um, do you have an uninterrupted view to the uh, west southwest? Because it'd be pretty low now, would it not be, Michael? Yeah, yeah, very low now. Very yeah. low. Yeah. So it'd be pretty low now. So you, 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 you know, if you've got an uninterrupted view, yeah, you probably could. Um, otherwise, maybe try tomorrow night about nine thirty, ten. Yeah. Look, actually, probably after ten because the darker the sky, the merrier. Like I've, I just caught it around the ten thirty mark in the binos, yeah. and it was because the dark sky and it was absolutely, absolutely brilliant. So, so 10, 10, 30, that is the, yep. I'm going down the beach tomorrow night. I'm going to head yeah, down to Green, that's, that's, Green for, that's for Victorian residents. Um, like say, if, you, if you're if you in Tassie, unfortunately, being the um, summer solstice, they, they get a, a very long twilight. So it's um, yeah, more no like 11 o'clock. Tassie, it's just Tassie. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're in Brisbane, you get, you get a lot shorter a lot shorter twilight. The, so I think, that, I think they're start, they think they're seeing the comet around the 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 8.30 mark. ASV yeah, Secretary is current, currently in Tasmania. Missing he all is of in this. Tasmania, yes. yes. <laughs> Sucks no, he to be him. He can't still be able to see it. Yeah. Yes. And now the, now the other the funny question was, uh, is, is this visible from the Southern Hemisphere? <laughs> We're in the Southern Hemisphere. That's exactly right. Yes. So the question so is, not can, everyone, can everyone in the Southern Hemisphere see this comet? No. The answer is no. no. And no. why is the answer no? <laughs> Let's <laughs> say so somebody needs to answer why. Is that because if you're in the Antarctic, you can't see it? Antarctica. Antarctic, you can't see it? Yeah. There you go. There you go. Ah, is it visible in the Northern Hemisphere? <laughs> Donna wants to know. And the answer is? Yes. Yes, actually. Yes. Although extre extremely low, that they're still getting images of it from the Northern Hemisphere, but at a very, very low attitude. Northern Hemisphere got it before we did, didn't they? They certainly did. Yes. We weren't able to see it until just uh, gone uh, Thursday last week. When I saw now, it. we got a pretty impressive comet uh, image of the comet from Andy. He's, he's worked hard processing this one. <laughs> <laughs> I knew uh, it was going <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Was... I, it looks, it looks so, so much, much like. Different. It, it looks so much like the comet from the Bayer Tapestry for yeah, some reason. in this image right now. It really is. There's a whole lot of dad joke in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's the next object on our list before we end up coming back to the comet? <laughs> uh, 3532, is it? Or is it for 3532, um... which is the wishing well. Which is well. Nice. This is a nice oh. one. Yeah, from last night. <laughs> Pre recorded from last night when Cloudwood wasn't cloudy. Yes, correct. Uh, where's I, my. Uh... Jeff, Jeff, I take everything I said about Tassie back. I love the place. And I met, and, and like everyone loves the place. Even Jimmy Rees loves Tasmania. He does. Now, this is the Wishing Well cluster. Steve, all yours. This was imaged last night, so this is not live stacked. Uh, well, only because Lee lives in Ringwood, which we've now turned to Cloudwood, and it's always cloudy. All yours, Steve. Can't zoom in. It's just, oh, it's come back. Um, so this is it's an open cluster. 
Uh, it's in the constellation Carina and uh, 1,600 light years away. So it's a little bit further away than some of the other open clusters that we were looking at early, earlier on. That's about 120 stars in it. Now, do you remember how I said that a lot, most open clusters are pretty young objects with, you know, young, bright, hot stars in them? Well, this is a bit older. So this is uh, about 200 to 350 million years old. That's what they estimate. Mm. Um, so the, the reason it's called the Wishing Well Cluster is because um, when you look at it, um, it kind of looks like silver coins shimmering at the bottom of a wishing well, kind of. Maybe more yeah, visually yeah. Than, than photographically, I would think. No, no, I can see that in the photograph. I, I get how that, that, that comes. Um, Keith's you saying that are... we're, heading, we're heading for the oldie world astronomy. <laughs> <laughs> you can see that there are some different coloured stars in there. I can see a couple of uh, orangey yellow ones as well as some of the the blue ones. There's a couple of red ones, really small red yeah. ones in there as well. Yeah. It's that big one. That may be a foreground star, that that big yellow one. Try almost I'm trying, to, I'm just trying to zoom in on that. It's not playing dice. It's actually a forty three meg image. There we go. So that's quite I think that's quite a nice object to look at. Visually, uh uh, that's going to be a lovely object to, to look at. Um, uh, magnitude 3, so it's uh, uh, notionally, in a dark site, it should be visible naked eye. So typically you can see, in a dark so sky, you can see visually uh, naked eye down to about magnitude 5, 5.5, uh, depending on how good your eyesight is. That's now, all Lee, I've got on that one. Lee, you've got a fellow cloud water. <laughs> yeah. If you think about that poor guy on Venus looking, you know, <laughs> looking at the uh, <laughs> looking at the cloud flying past very close. I, you know, I don't think we should ever complain about clouds. Yeah. No. no. Hey, how's Santa going with uh, his next yeah. object? He's almost he's almost got something here. I mean, you can bring it up. I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up. Ooh. Hmm. So this is technically the running chicken nebula. Is this it? Yeah. Yeah. Running thirty. Yeah. It be it, so we've, it, it we've named be it because, in honour of our of our uh, American friends, we've named it the running turkey nebula tonight. <laughs> Because everyone has turkey at Thanksgiving in America, and then we have turkey at Christmas in Australia. I think it looks a bit more like the turkey leftovers nebula, to be honest. <laughs> it, it is the first Christmas lunch turkey leftovers. Yeah, it um, it's the grandpa. What is it? It's granddad having a nap on the couch. Turkey nebula. Yeah, Some, nobody wanted the neck. There was one of the wings uh, they've left, and then I think one and a half legs are still left, but of course, all the breasts. It's the one and a half legs turkey. <laughs> no, well, I mean, if, if anything, maybe it's the uh, National Lampoon's Christmas vacation where he goes to carve the turkey that's been goes, in the oven for 10 hours. <laughs> turkey. Uh, yes, it is. Yep, the one where they're gnawing on the uh, the dry chicken. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's beautiful. Oh. <laughs> oh, we know what this is? Look, we're talking now about asterisms again. <laughs> Kelly says that it looks like a duck running before it flies. <laughs> yeah. And do you know what? I see a dragon's head. The star is the eye, and yep. then the brighter nebulosity there is like the nasal part of its jaw opening. Up the top or down the bottom? Yeah, up the top. A bit up, up the top. top. Yeah. So you see what you want to see in an object. It's, Maybe uh, we need to. I've got the. Uh, I've got the drawing. The uh, the Wacom here. Maybe we should do the um, some wide world of sports um, live <laughs> annotations on these next time. <laughs> next time, let's do. Yeah. There, there you go. There's our next stream, guys. Our, our next stream is uh, going to be wild world of sports themed drawing over the top of. The objects we image. <laughs> uh, 
can we do Wired World of Sports and can we get um, Billy Sports. Birmingham on? Do you reckon Billy would come onto a stream? I'm not too sure. Be. I'm not too sure about that, Mark. Um, Got him, yeah, but, yeah. Um, we, <laughs> we could uh, give it a go. Give it a red hot you know, go. Do you know what? It does. It looks like Falcor from the Never Ending Story. <laughs> Is that still going? It. I can see that. I can absolutely see that. Falco! <laughs> Betray you! <laughs> Betray you! <laughs> uh, yes. Do you want to know what this actually is? Sorry? Do you want to know what this actually is? <laughs> what is it actually? <laughs> Let's actually do some science, shall we? And that's what yeah. we're here for. So to educate the masses, not to I make see, jokes. I see 2944 is sort of its designation, but actually IP2944 is the designation of an open cluster in the nebula, which I think is the... I kind of think it's probably right. the, the cluster... Well, I'm not sure. Do you think it's the cluster below the bright star in the... I'm not oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not it looks like there's a couple right in there, doesn't it? Yeah. I, I mean, it's it, the nebula, It's an emission nebula, and you, the, the red coloration kind of gives that away. Uh, uh, a little bit. So this is uh, ionized uh, gas um, and, uh, and it's an area of active star formation. Now, this is also in, in really good uh, longer exposures, you get to see some very little sort of very dark uh, uh, little blobs uh, in the nebula. And these are called Bok globules. Uh, and Bok globules are very <laughs> dense areas of uh, of gas and dust that are sort of c condensing down and will eventually form into proto stars and then into actual stars. Uh, so uh, if you have a look at um, uh, sort of the longer exposure uh, photographs of the running chicken nebula, you can very clearly see these Bok globules. Named after Mr. Bock, I think. I don't know his first name. I can see just in another image the the actual um the open that cluster, but I'm just, I'm just trying to I'm trying to kind of do a a a, uh, a manual a, a brain plate solve against those stars versus what's there. Need to zoom in a little, maybe. So I'm just going to quickly jump across. Ooh, oh, hang on. No, we'll stay on that for the moment. Now, while you're doing that, we've had a message come through to the ASV asking, because, um, like, I know everything, um, <laughs> asking if people who are in the general public can buy tickets to the uh, Lantern Slideshow event with the nearly 100-year-old, they're about 90-year-old glass plate slides that we're going to be sharing um, through the original slideshow projector in January at the brewery, um, the dinner event there. And, yes, you don't have to be a member. There is no requirement to be a member to come along to that dinner event. All you've got to do is go to our Facebook page under events. The tickets are there in the events section, the Lantern Slideshow Extravaganza, uh, or even go to asv.org.au, and on the front page there will be a link and it's open to members and the general public. There are only 100 tickets available to it, though. Um, so, and if you want to get a ticket, grab one now. Uh, that's for sure. Someone still has photos of Heli Comet that they took. Oh, Jeff took from Wollongong in New South Wales. And guess what? It was cloudy then. <laughs> huh. Typical astronomical uh, event in Australia, hey? Cloudy. Yeah. Jeff, I if you've still got those photos in there and and you, you'd like us to share them, by all means, you can send them to us. Um, you can message them to our Facebook page and we'd be more than happy to share them with the public if you're okay with that. Hmm. We've got a feeling it might be in the top, the, those in the top right, actually, Steve. Yeah. What are we looking for? The little cluster? The, the actual, cluster, um, yeah, yeah, IC2944. I, I think you're right. It's that top right corner. Yeah, but there's it, they're bigger, aren't they? Yeah. So because yeah. it, visually, it's going to be the bigger stars that you you would see. Uh, and, you know. and you can actually you can actually just sort of make out because the there is with right in the middle of it. You know, in this other image I'm looking at, 
it's there are a couple of the block bock globules right yeah. within that Bring actual up. lab. I'm, I'm sorry, but yeah. we have to run away yeah. from Santa's because um, it's just on better, uh, Wikipedia. Amory's better at this than Santa is. <laughs> There we go. Sorry, Santa. So you can see the bot globules there, uh, and you can see ah. the open cluster. Yeah, yeah the it's right up top there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly yeah. yeah, those really dark spots. Yep. Yeah. Oh, they're really dark. That's good. And you can actually see the chicken in this one. Well, I can see a chicken in this one anyway. I can't. I can. Lee can. Lee draws an amazing chicken. I, no, I, I didn't draw that one. I, oh, I, I you found that one. I'll take the I credit where you can, Lee. Take it. Take it. <laughs> so that now, does anybody have the Christmas tree? I I have my stack that I did earlier, but you didn't come back to me. So this was it here, with which is nine shots. Nine shots. Yeah, I can't figure out which way the cone head, whether the cone's on the right or the left. I think it's on the right. So if you tilt your head to the right, that's the top of the Christmas tree. Yeah. yeah I like I said, the... I, don't, I can't fit it all in my screen. So um... oh, I feel like I can see the head of the fox with the eyes very yeah. faintly just above that bright star, which is the fox oh, okay. fur yeah. nebula, I think it is. Yep. Yeah. I've... I've got one yeah, I did a while you... ago. What's that, Andy? I've got one I did a, a while ago. I, it was right, stacking so really we're, well. We're going to um, cheat here, and we're going with a, an old image just yeah. because we really want to show you this image. So this is the Christmas tree nebula. And, yeah, yeah on the right-hand side there you can see mm. the cone. Yep. Yeah. And then on the left-hand side, the red part that's next to all of the blue and the bright stars is the fox Fur ne fox fur nebula, yeah. Fox fur, fox yeah. fur nebula. That's right. So the um, the very bright star in the picture is like the base of the Christmas tree, and then the cone nebula is at the top of the Christmas tree, pointing outwards, going the wrong way. So going Andy, can you tell us a little bit about this? You, what you've done to take this image? Well, these were. Um, a series of seven-minute um, images. There's uh, about 420 seconds for each one, and uh, it was about an hour and a half, if, if I can remember, quite, yeah, to get this one. So it's about, yeah, about 420 on this one. Pin drop. Um, anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're I'm gonna love it when you're gonna love it when you to a, to, an, to a message. Sorry, that's, that's just the best when you actually announce your own pin drop. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't a mic drop. Um, I was Jeff, trying, to, trying to figure out the next target. <laughs> Jeff, uh, Jeff has said that he's going to send scan them and send them through his images of Halley. Um, and Jeff, yes, we absolutely will credit you with that. Uh, we just love sharing images um, of objects on our media for everyone to see so they can see how amazing uh, the night sky actually is. Yeah, so that's another nice image there. Yeah, not not as long. Um, I was stacking really well, and then when I lost internet, I took oh. three cloudy <coughs> images, got stacked onto it, and knocked it off again. <laughs> so... All right, I'm going to share my screen because I've just noticed that Neil has shared his image of fox fur and Christmas tree. And knowing Neil, it's going to be a crazy shot. Uh, there it is there. Can we see that? It's coming up. Not yet. Oh, yeah. All right. That's correct way up, that is. So the top... Yeah top of that which yeah. is cone okay. is the top of the christmas tree and then down the bottom on the left hand side jumping into that blue nebulosity is fox fur and then the main star cluster is the christmas tree cluster neil yeah. thank you very mu much for uh, posting that one night we should get neil live stacking with us i think definitely yeah yep. 
Pressure's on, Neil. Come on. Join us for the next live stream. Neil's one of the, um, uh, one of the ASV's best astrophotographers. Uh, he has joined us on live streams as a special comments before, but I think we need to get him on live stacking because I think he'd have a blast doing it. So this is a, a very stunning image of a uh, Christmas tree. There you go. Neil, when we do the uh, wide world of astronomy sports live stream, which will be the next one in January, you can come on with that one and do some, some live stacking with us. It would be fun. It would be a whole lot of fun. Uh, now, I believe I could see, Jesse is saying, I believe I could see a cat tiger in the blue cluster. And that's, once again, that's one of those asterism things, isn't it, Steve? All of these are just asterisms. They're just things that we see in the objects and everyone sees different things. Yeah. No, a a asterisms are slightly different. You're oh, not asterism. What's the word I'm looking for? Paradolia. Para there you go. There's the word. <laughs> Which is seeing elephants in clouds and uh, <laughs> various things like I that. I thought it was asterism. I learned something. No, that tonight. asterisms are more the, the just stars themselves <laughs> forming the things shapes. like the Christmas yeah. tree or the yeah shapes. Or the butterfly, the Southern the butterfly Cross. cluster. The Southern Cross or, is a is a the Southern Cross is a classic or the, asterism. Or it's or a the cross. COVID in the COVID cluster. Correct. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to jump back to what have we got here? What are we looking at here, Michael? Yes, well, this is uh, 19P Borelli. It's oh, another Borelli, comet different in the comet, sky. different comet. Yes, yes, I know. But, but check out the comparison between this fella and that fella. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that yeah. is that one coming straight for us, or yeah. is it just further away? Or he, he can't compete. <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, basically, distance. Distance means a lot, especially especially for comets when they're uh, like Borelli. Um, at this point, is uh, is still approaching the sun. It's going to get get there at the end of January. Um, let me just pull up some information for you. Hang on a moment. I've got so, the distance, Michael. Have you? You got the distance. Yeah. has 176 million kilometers. Yes, uh, yeah, a long way away. away. <laughs> More importantly, the heliocentric radius is 1.4 astronomical units. So it's around the orbit of Mars at the moment. So it just needs to get a little bit close to the sun to, to be more exciting. That's why that's why Comet Halley is so good because it's um, it gets to around the point point five eight astronomical units every 76 years. So just a bit of a heads up as well. In 2024, April, May, we're going to get a, a Halley type comet uh, called Pons Brooks. It's the 12th periodic comet, which uh, which will reach naked eye visibility. So that's 2024. It's still a long way away though, isn't it? But that's why I'm saying make use of uh, what we've got today and tonight. This fella. <laughs> this fella. Oh, that's looking even better. But every time you bring it up, it just gets better and better, doesn't it? My goodness. You should so, never let yeah, never let these moments wonder. escape you, mate. So every every night, get out and have a look. Just to get get those cameras out. Start snapping away. Yeah, you, know, you don't see these things very often at all. That's that's the beauty of comets. They're transient nature. Like you can, you, can image the the you can image the pencil nebula every every night of every year, <laughs> well, almost. But uh, pencil these nebula. Guys. Oh, <laughs> All right, we have a question for you, Michael. Is yes, this sir. live? No, unfortunately not. No, but the comments already it was gone now. Taken tonight, though, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, about quarter past ten. So it's about the prime time in in Victoria. That is. So it depends on where you are. That, that time will vary as to when, when the best best time to see it. All right, so, now yes. we're going to jump across to. We've got a couple. I've got a couple more objects for us to go to. Um, one's not on the list, and we'll get to that one last. So hold tight on that one, Santa. 
Um, we're going to go to, I believe, Emory. you've got NGC 5189. Yes, that's correct, which is the Hubble Holiday Ornament. The Hubble Holiday, and it does look like a holiday ornament. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. You can hang yeah. that from your Christmas tree. They say yeah, it resembles a glass-blown holiday ornament. I think it looks like one of those S-shaped buckles that you know mm. that you used to get um, the you know the the glass on a belt. It's pretty it good actually, like, it's it better looks, than I, I thought it, it would be. Able to show. I think it yeah. looks like the um, logo of the South Side Serpents from. Um, <laughs> It's like a glow in the dark pretzel. It does look like a glow in the dark pretzel. Oh. You know, you know, you know, like when because... you know. It does. It's a Christmas pretzel. You hang it from your Christmas tree. Paint it up by your children. You know, at school with macaroni stuck to it and. Spray those, painted, yeah. spray sealed, and then hung from your Christmas tree before it goes mouldy after a few years. A few years. Well, if it's spray sealed, it'll last a few years, and then it'll go mouldy. But that actually, I, I can see how, like, even if it's up like upside down, if you turned it around, that blob to the bottom. Um, and yes, Riverdale is the word I was looking for. Riverdale, Southside Serpents. It does look like their logo. Uh, if you turn oh, it around 180 degrees, that little blob on the bottom is almost like the bit that you hang from the Christmas tree. Oh, that yeah. noise. It's, it's very noisy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of noise in there. That's get, walking noise because I'm not dithering. You, you should get a um, a, a phone thing with. <laughs> I'm doing, doing it properly. I'm doing it properly. Don't knock my photography. Steve, take it away. So the reason it's called the Hubble Holiday Ornament, I don't know if Anne-Marie mentioned this, is that it was um, imaged by the Hubble Space Telescope uh, back in 2012 and then presented as a nice sort of Christmassy uh, sort of uh, image. Uh, it's actually a planetary nebula. So do you remember earlier on we were talking about supernova remnant, the uh, uh, nebula, uh, and I said that they supernovas are typically at the tail end of very large stars when they kind of uh, come to a violent end. Well, middle-sized stars like the sun end up like one of these. It's a planetary nebula where they're blowing off layers of gas. Uh, out uh, into the uh, um, uh, out beyond the, the uh, uh, what's left of the star, which uh, is typically a uh, a white dwarf, and the uh, energy that's generated by the the white dwarf it gets very hot. Uh, it ionizes these layers of gas that are being blown away. Uh, and there's quite a strong sort of solar wind coming off the uh, um, the white dwarf as well, which is why you get these sort of wispy shapes and uh, in the um, often in, in the uh, planetary nebula. Um, this one's 4,000 light years away, uh, and it's magnitude 9.5. So in theory is uh, uh, visible visually in a sort of small to medium sized uh, telescope. Um, it's quite a small object though, so uh, uh, I suspect would be uh, a bit of a challenge. Um, discovered by John Herschel. So of course William it was. Uh, well, 1835. Yeah, John Herschel discovered everything, didn't he? <laughs> well, it's him and, him and his dad. Him and his, uh, uh, did, did a lot of it. I think they probably had better telescopes than anybody else, and they were also able to travel around. So, um, you know, a lot of the Junkers. stuff that they could view down here, um, they uh, they did because they were able to travel down here. All right. So Lee's going to get um, an image of this he took last night. Uh, yeah, it's, um, it's sort of show. It's Actually, it was with the 72 mil, so it's not all that big. Oh, well, a bit of colour. Tiny, but it's got some colour to it. 
Mm. Yeah. I haven't done any processing on that. At, at, oh, hang on. If I. Well, yeah. That's probably a bit better. Whoa. Actually. What are you doing to us? Hang on. Come on, Lee. Lift your game. There we go. So there's some red and some green and some blue in there. This, um, yeah, it's interesting. A, a lot of planetary nebula are, are sort of like just round blobs. But, you know, obviously this one has got this sort of S kind of shape. And one of the theories is that the, the, the sort of the, the twisting shapes of the, uh, of, of the material being blown off uh, from, the, uh, um, from the dying star is actually because it's not one star, but there's actually a, an unseen binary partner to the main star. Uh, and it's that that's uh, causing the twisting shapes. You can see the two stars in mine. I'm assuming oh. that's the two you're talking about. Yeah. Mm. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to jump back across to Michael's image of Borelli because he's added some more to it. I think by the looks of it. Before we go to our last object, which Santa has just added to the list because you know Santa does whatever he wants. To he do. was keeping that one to himself. He didn't let <laughs> anybody else he know. Didn't let anybody know about it? No. Nope. So we'll, he's just like not nah, not telling anyone about this one. This is mine. No. So this is so, Michael. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about the old comet here we're looking at, Borelli? Or oh, we... oh, sorry, I'm on mute. Yeah, sorry. It, it, the wind was annoying some of our viewers. <laughs> Not, no, <laughs> sorry, Neil in particular. So, comet Borelli. What do you want to know about it? it well, it's actually, uh, deep, the Deep Space One space probe um, flew by this uh, comet in uh, 2001, I think. Yep. Um, testing out its ion engine drive, you know, new technologies. Uh, but uh, and, and it was a lovely photo of it as well. It looked like a like a giant bowling pin about eight kilometres across. So it's um, yeah, very yeah, very unusual shape on it. But uh, comets comets are generally unusual in shape. You, you're never going to get a, a round comet unless it's very large. Actually, talking about large comets, we do have. You, you probably saw in the news early this year about this uh, comet Bernard Dinelli Bernstein. Did they ring a bell at all? It's, it sounds uh, like a law firm. No, they, they the call it the largest. The only thing I remember Bernstein in it was the book The Bernstein Bears. <laughs> oh. Well, they're, they're claiming that they're claiming that this is a gigantic comet, the largest comet ever discovered. And it's coming in to the solar system. However, what what you don't realise is it's it doesn't even get any closer to the sun than Saturn. <laughs> but despite this, it might actually be visible in a telescope. So it's going to be very interesting. It comes to perihelion in ten years' time in twenty thirty one. It's a gigantic object. Not this one here. This is come up really. Um... <laughs> All right now. Before we jump across to Santa's last object, will the comet and I'm and I'm assuming Jason's talking about uh, uh, Leonard? Will it be in the same position tomorrow night? Hell no! <laughs> it's, uh, it's moving at about three degrees per day, so it's, it'll be it, from our perspective in in you know, in Australia, it's moving vertically up upwards. So, so it's getting um, higher in the sky. Yes, which is a good thing. Good. The high, the high Makes the it better. easier to see. <laughs> All right. Now, now yep. we, we are going to go to Santa's object, and Santa can talk about this one since he put it on the list at the last minute and didn't tell anybody about it. No. What I can say is he has called it Reindeer Head Nebula. <laughs> Santa, take it away with your <laughs> Reindeer Head Nebula. Where's the horns? I cannot see any reindeer. It's a reindeer that's lost its antlers. <laughs> it's a female. Yeah, it's oh. a female. It's a female. I'm sure there was females there. Um, it's a deer. A female yeah. deer. 
Well, wasn't Donna? What were some of the Randy's? Chris Sanders, Randy's female anyway, like Donna and Blitzen. Were they female Randy's? Donda, Donda, not Donna. Donda, Donda, Donna. Donna, Donna, Donna's 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 Donna is a kebab. Donna. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Googling this. Sanders Randy. Go take it away, Noel, since you put this one on here. Well, yeah, this this is a uh, a bright emission nebula. Um, that's why it's you see all this um the red bit. So the, the actual reindeer's head is a dust cloud that's obscuring that um the light that we're getting off of this uh, emission. Uh, and it lives up in the um in the near the Orion. Uh, well, within the Orion constellation near M42, which a lot of astronomers um, uh, are pretty keen on looking at and imaging. So um, it's a bit of a favourite object to image because it's quite dramatic to look at. Um, but it's it's visually, it's a bit, bit hard to see unless you've got a really big telescope in a really dark sky. Um, I have seen it at... Um, uh, LMDSS, um, but yeah, it's still a, a bit of a challenge. So um, I guess it's, uh, well, I've just had to look something up here. It's what, one and a half thousand light years away. Um, and also discovered by Sir William Herschel. Now, can I just say that I was right? All of Santa's reindeer are women. They're all female because male reindeer lose Rudolph, their antlers. Wasn't? Male reindeer lose their antlers in winter. Females don't. Therefore, Santa's sleigh is pulled by a team of strong, powerful, underrated women. Rudolph, Rudolph was young. He didn't have horns. Well, Rudolph might not have been, but the rest of them all were female. There you go. He didn't join in the other reindeer games. Yeah. There you go. Now, Michael, we're about to close out our stream. Indeed. Can we get Atlas? Can we get Atlas? <laughs> oh, I've got a big tree in my way, I'm afraid. All right. So, all right. Can we pop back then the image of. Um, Could I get Atlas? The most awesome <laughs> and amazing Leonard. There it is. So I'm going to run through a little bit of a closeout before we all pop back on stream. Um, as I mentioned at the start of the night, the 100-year anniversary raffle will be on sale. Um, Noel, have you done the artwork? Uh, I mean, Santa, Santa, have you, have you done the artwork? I'll finish it tomorrow. I'm still busy finish making tomorrow? all right. those PlayStations. There we go. So you're busy making PS5s and telescopes yeah. for um, – PS5s and telescopes yeah, well, for Stacey. more orders this yeah, well, so cool, tomorrow afternoon, the 100-year anniversary raffle with that awesome prize, the Saxon 200DS Astrophotography Newtonian Telescope with HEQ5 go-to mount on a steel tripod with the three eyepieces valued at $3,627 will go on sale. Um, we'll share it on our social media. It'll be on our website with the link. Uh, five bucks a ticket. Um Grab one. Uh, it's drawn on the so it's open to Australian um, Australian people only. Sorry to everybody who doesn't live in Australia. We love you, but it's a lot of money to ship <laughs> a telescope overseas. So this is only open to Australian residents only. Uh, then we have our uh, our uh, slideshow spectacular on the thirty first of January at Deeds Brewery. Um, 120 bucks a person, three course meal, 90 year old glass plate slides uh, shown in the through the original lantern slide. Um, hey, what happened to our comet? Where'd it go, Michael? Oh, did something happen? Thanks, Grant. There, there we go. go. Yeah, I'll go back to my spiel now. Um, we've got Eta Argus before it was known as Eta Carina. We've got objects, we've, we've got images from the 1930s of uh, Orion Nebula. We have moon photos on these glass plate slides that are 90 years old from the, that were taken in the 1870s. Uh, we have um, the uh, Andromeda Nebula before it was known as Andromeda Galaxy. All of these glass plate slides from the 1930s from the British Astronomical Association will be um, shared through the original lantern slide 
at the Deeds Guru, three course dinner. Um, all the funds raised go to the ASV and all of the amazing projects we're working on at the moment, um, which is next year's project is the Remote Observatory STEM project. The idea there is to get uh, children and high school students and, well, anybody who's interested in um, imaging the night sky who can't get to a deep sky, a dark sky site, to be able to access remotely these telescopes um, to do imaging and to do scientific research. That is the goal of this next project. We've got the All Abilities Astronomy Project, which is nearly complete, should be finished by Feb. Concrete was poured today. So that one is taken care of. It is now time to start fundraising for our next major project, um, which is the uh, Remote Observatory STEM project. Now I'm going to bring us all back on stream. Here we go. We're back. The front yard grid astronomer, Santa, Amory, the comet man, Andy, who I still think yep, yep. looks like the most hip, hip, hip elf ever. Santa's favourite elf. <laughs> like, this is... Uh, I, I love your outfit, Andy. Um, oh, Christmas me. I, I went to Christmas hair tonight. Uh, Steve, thank you for being our special comments. Uh, to our live stream team who have helped us throughout the last year and a half of their live streams, thank you very much. Um, that goes out to, to Caleb and Stefan and Gerald and, and Neil as well, who's helped, and um, Claire as well for jumping on live streams with us. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all, all who came along to, to tonight's Christmas stream. We hope you enjoyed the stream. Uh, if you're not a member and you're interested in becoming a member, www.asv.org.au forward slash join. If you're not following us on Facebook, why are you not following us on Facebook? You should be following us on Facebook. Post a lot of cool stuff. Uh, Linda takes care of a lot of that for us. Thank you, Linda, for running our, our Facebook page and taking care of all our social media. Um, if you're not on um, YouTube, subscribe to us on YouTube. Ring the you know, click click the bell so you don't miss anything that we do. Um, and thank you everybody for joining us throughout the year. And we hope you have a wonderful Christmas and a happy New Year. And you probably won't see us between now and New Year's unless we get really bored, which is. You know, never <laughs> Uh, but you will definitely see us on a live stream in January. Um, if you haven't got a ticket to our dinner in January, grab one if you're local. Um, Stacey's, well, we're flying down from Sydney to grab a ticket and come to our dinner and support us because you'll have a blast. And who knows, Santa might bring you that telescope. Uh, but for everyone, thank you very much for coming along and we will see you next stream. Bye. See ya. See ya. Feliz Navidad.